good friend of mine that uh, said, when in doubt, don't. So uh, I'm going to stick to that. What kind of things do you weigh in, in those moments when you're pondering what to do? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you know, all the reasons to keep playing are still there. You know, you, you love playing the game. You love being around the guys. Um, you, you, know, you love, um, you know, competing, um, you know, battling together um, with people you care about. Um, all that stuff is still very strong in your mind. Um, and then as you get older, little other things peak up. Um, so I just think that at this point, I, there's still too many positives, not enough negatives to uh, to really uh, seriously um, you know, step away from the game. Same you approach to this, same approach to this season. Mm -hmm. Maybe too many, like you have going to the last year, saying yeah. this is the last one you'll wait until next off. Again, I don't, I don't want to you know, harp too much on this. I think that obviously, you know, the, the only reason we're addressing this is because like an article or this, but I've been in the same mindset for the last two or three years. Um, and I think that most older guys are in the same mindset. Um, and it's not that, you know, you're, it's like a 50-50 way. It's just, you know, there's times, especially during a season uh, where you're banged up. You know, last year I played through, you know, grade two MCL sprain, a broken foot, uh, other nagging things that have been building on me. I had a torn elbow at one point. I had a brace on the entire left side of my body, and that starts to bother you a little bit. Um, so, uh, but that's why, you know, I think that most of the older guys, especially talking to them and uh, gaining their advice is, you know, really take, you know, time after the season to, you know, step back, recover, and uh, you get a much more, uh, you know, clarity of mind, talk to my wife, figure out where we're at, and, you know, obviously, like I said, it was very much always um, still continuing to play. It's just now there's more little things in there that factor in. Did you, oh, surgery? Did you need surgery this offseason? No, no surgery. Mm -hmm. Just in your heel now? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. On the topic of older players, this team has invested in a lot of older players this offseason, yourself included. Yeah. All players 30 and over. What's the benefit of that, A, and and B, what does that say about kind of the window of this team right now? Yeah, you know, I think we've invested a little bit in some more guys, but we also have a, you know, we have a wealth of some young talent on the team, in particular at the quarterback position. Um, you know, I think it really takes a good balance of having older guys and younger guys, and we're probably going to pick some more guys up here in a few weeks that will balance out the younger portion of the roster. Um, and I think it just leads to a better balance mm -hmm. overall for your mm -hmm. team. Uh, you know, obviously, young guys come in. They're excited to play in the NFL. They have a youthful enthusiasm uh, that's infectious. And sometimes uh, the older guys kind of got to guide that in the right direction and um, you know figure out uh, you know how to you know get the best out of those guys. And um, and I think that the teams that I've been on that have had a good balance of older guys and younger guys generally tend to uh, perform the best. So you had all three of those injuries this this past season with the, the elbow, the grade two, and broken foot. Mm -hmm. What I mean, nobody in this room has been mostly has been able to experience, you know, would understand what that's like. I mean, what, what's that like going through a season like that? Well, I mean, that's every season, you know. I think I mean maybe not this, maybe not all three all at the same time, but you know, you have dings and bruises every single year. Um, it's just you know, as you get older, you have more nagging ones, especially, and uh, you know. Pain isn't necessarily a fun thing to endure. Uh, luckily, they'll give you know we, we can still get some anti-inflammatories on game day, and um, we can kind of push through a lot of that stuff. <clears throat> but um, you know, it's everybody's different. Everybody has you know what they're willing to to do and, and go through, and I mean that's just part of this game. You know, everybody out there has been hurt at one point or another and played hurt, and as long as you're not playing detrimental to the team, uh, and it's not detrimental to your overall health to play with those injuries that usually play with them. The information about sort of life after football with your generation of players, there's a lot more uh, information and awareness than maybe there were previously. Mm -hmm. How much do you weigh uh, that kind of thing when you're making some of these decisions? Um, I guess, you know, that's a, a little bit into it maybe. Um, you know, I think that, you know, nobody wants to you know, some guys want to play till the wheels fall off. Some guys, you know, want to play while it, uh, 
you know, and, and think about life after football. The bottom line is you you want to do what you're comfortable with and what you're um, happy with, right? And for me, it's a simple, you know, it's cost benefit analysis. How much joy do I get from this game? You know, what's going to happen uh, by continuing to play? Uh, where's my body at? Where's uh, my mind at? All that stuff. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, there's so many different factors that go into it. But like I said, I think the, the biggest thing is just, you know, I know I love doing this. I know uh, it makes me happy. I know that. Um, that I enjoy being a part of this group and these guys and this team, and uh, that it made that decision very, very easy. What, what do you think he'll do whenever, whenever football's over? What's up? What, what do you think he'll do whenever football's over? I don't know. That's something that obviously, you know, it's a tough question to answer. Um, <clears throat> you think about it more and more. I think the closer you get, the older you get, because you know that 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 uh, time is approaching. Um, and I've weighed a few things, but. Uh, ultimately, you know, I'm still very much into playing. Don't worry about that when it happens, I guess. When we, more. when we when we talked to Carson earlier, he gave us the answer that we usually hear that today is kind of like the first day of school for you guys getting back in there. I'm mm -hmm. curious, what's the energy like getting back into the room with these guys right now? The first day is always great. You know, I think that, um, you know, we're so used to being around the locker room, being around the guys. You know, in high school, college, you do it year round like at the NFL is obviously a little bit different you get a three or four month hiatus but um, you know I think that that's what everybody loves most about playing this game is you know being in the locker room uh, competing uh, just being around the team um, you know that atmosphere and everything like that is uh, so so hard to get outside of football um, you know, it really becomes like your second family and uh, it was awesome seeing a lot of those guys and catching up on off-season uh, trips and uh, where their families are at and things like that. What's the Jeez, 